good afternoon, everybody. What we're going to be looking at in this second video uh, linked to government interventions is going to be maximum and minimum prices. So the previous video talked you through how indirect taxes and subsidies can be used to correct market failures. We're now going to be thinking about other ways that governments can influence prices in markets through maximum and minimum prices. But anyway, everyone, what we're going to think first of all then about is maximum prices. So this is about what we call a price ceiling. Now, what we're trying to do in the market here is to make products cheaper. So in other words, lower prices. So if we've got a market that is under consumed or underproduced, you know, that misallocation of resources. If we can bring down prices, it will raise the demand for these products. So you, you tend to want to put maximum prices on things such as merit goods and things that generate positive externalities when they're consumed. Now, look at this diagram then. Let's imagine that we've got this equilibrium point, price one, quantity one. But we've decided in this marketplace, economic welfare would be far higher if people consumed more of this product. So again, just to reiterate, we're looking at merit goods and positive externalities here. Now, what we could do, we could say that price in that marketplace is too high. There's not enough people willing and able to pay that price to buy these goods and services. So we've got to bring the price down below that market equilibrium point. So what we do, we set a price max. So the government are literally saying to businesses, it's illegal for you to charge above that price level there. Now look at the benefit, what that will do. It would lead to demand extending. Remember the law of demand, if price levels fall, then people will become more willing and able to buy the products. So what this will have the effect of doing is lowering prices, which will raise the demand for goods and services. So it will mean that more people will buy more merit goods, more people will consume things, which create those wonderful external benefits for society. It's also a really, really good strategy for tackling poverty. So there are certain things that we all need, you know, whether it be food, shelter, um, healthcare, etc. What maximum prices can do that can make these things more affordable to more people. So we have in Britain, for example, in some parts across the country, rent controls, which means that, you know, when people in private rented accommodation or state public rented accommodation have got a maximum price they will be charged for their rent. It's about, you know, providing a, a vital access to an essential need. Now, there is a problem, though, when it comes to um, maximum prices. As price levels fall, it will also create a contraction in supply. As price levels fall, then firms become less willing and able to produce these goods and services. With the rationale being, firms do things for profit. If price levels are falling, there's less ability to make profit. Therefore, they've got less of an incentive to want to produce. Now, what this will therefore mean is that price maximum has got good intentions, bringing prices down, making things more affordable for more people, raising consumption of merit goods and positive externalities. But it will create excess demand. Now, what that means is shortages. There's more demand than what there is supply. So what this means then is that people won't be able to always access what they want at that price level. So we're going to have waiting lists to access um, some essential products that have got maximum prices on. Now, when you think about it, this has prevented the market from doing its job properly. Normally, when you've got an excess demand problem, the invisible hand will force prices upwards back up to P1. But this maximum prices intervention is preventing the free market mechanism from doing its job. We're therefore going to get shortages in the market. Now, because of that, what we often have to do is to combine maximum prices with another form of government intervention. So look at this diagram here. What we know is that when you introduce the maximum price, it's going to create shortages, the excess demand problem. Now, the way the market will solve this problem or where the government will solve this problem is by introducing into the market a subsidy. And look what that will then do. If we can lower the cost of production for firm for a producer subsidy, then we can show the market will clear at this new equilibrium point. OK, so that will therefore mean that firms will now produce quantity free and we've tackled the excess demand problem. But 
is to reiterate, to make sure that maximum price is effective, we do need to have a subsidy introduced into the marketplace. Now, if you remember, the vertical distance between the supply curves would measure the subsidy per unit. So to enforce maximum prices and make them effective, there probably will be a cost for the government to prevent the excess demand problem in markets. Now, if we were summarising then, um, the benefits and the drawbacks of maximum prices, we could be putting this down. The big benefit of maximum prices is they will lower prices. So the big benefit of that is it's making products more affordable, which will mean that people from lower income backgrounds can access more goods and services. So it raises consumption, particularly, as I said before, for people on lower income backgrounds. They're more able to access essential needs, if you like. What it would also do is to potentially correct market values. If it's raising demand for merit goods and positive externalities, then it's going to correct that misallocation of resources problem. The big problem that we said was it will create excess demand. So what we call shortages, we're preventing the price mechanism from doing its job. We're stopping price levels going up to clear the marketplace. So that therefore means it would need to be combined with subsidies to tackle the excess demand. And of course, subsidies create a cost to the taxpayer. Governments have got to fund those subsidies and clearly that's going to cost the government and therefore the taxpayer a lot of money and that will create potential opportunity cost problems. Right, OK, now let's think about the opposite then. Let's now think about minimum prices. Now, at this time, what we're trying to do in the marketplace is to raise prices. We're trying to make things more expensive. Now, when you think about it, this could be due to reduced consumption. So, for example, we might put minimum prices on things that create negative externalities. It could also be added to demerit goods to make these things more expensive and therefore contract demand. But also there are other ways that minimum prices can be used as well. We've got minimum wages. OK, so the idea would be that we're preventing people from being exploited or getting very, very low wages. Governments can identify what the minimum income would be required. Um, to, to meet basic wants and needs and make sure that people receive that pay when they go and get a job. Uh, what these also do, though, as well, they guarantee incomes for some producers. OK, so the idea would be if you're a farmer, for example, prices of what you sell tend to fluctuate quite significantly. The government could say to the market, right, OK, uh, we guarantee you a price equal to a particular level. Uh, that means the people that produce these goods and services know exactly what they will get for their products when they sell them. It's therefore going to guarantee their incomes and prices and therefore enable them to grow and carry on producing in that marketplace. So you tend to find that minimum prices might be applied to farmers, which means they get a guaranteed income for the food that they produce. Right. Now, for a minimum price to be effective, it needs to be set above the equilibrium point. So in a market, we've got this red equilibrium point, price one, Q1. So what we would do now, we set a price min above that equilibrium point. Now look what this will do. It will contract demand down to Q2. As these products become more expensive, less people become willing and able to buy them. But it will also extend supply to Q3. Think about why. As price levels grow, there's now a bigger ability to make profit. We're incentivizing more production. So think about how we could use minimum prices now then. If we want to reduce consumption of demerit goods and negative externalities, then what we can do, we can introduce minimum prices, make things more expensive, and it will reduce demand. We've therefore got fewer negative externalities and demerit goods being produced and consumed. Minimum wages? Well, what this is doing is incentivizing more people to work and it's about protecting people on low income backgrounds. So they're now going to receive a higher rate of pay for what they earn. Guaranteed incomes. Well, think about farmers. If they're now receiving a higher price for their produce, it's incentivizing them to produce more in the marketplace. 
and that can guarantee things such as food production. Now, there is a problem, though, when it comes to minimum prices. What it's now going to create is excess supply in the market. So what we've done, we've distorted the price mechanism. Normally, the free market economy would fix the excess supply by bringing prices down to clear the market. But in this example here, we've got an excess supply problem. There's a bigger supply than what there is demand. OK, so there's a misallocation of resources, you could argue, created by the government. Firms are producing more than what people would like to buy. Now, let's put all this together now by thinking about the benefits and drawbacks of minimum prices. Now, first of all, let's go for the obvious one. It lowers consumption of bad products. So if it's reducing demand for um, negative externalities and demerit goods, then that's a good thing. It's correcting a market failure. Uh, what we also know, though, as well, is it protects workers. It ensures that workers receive a decent level of income for supplying their labour. And if you're a farmer or a business that benefits from minimum price, you know in advance prices. So when you produce your products, you know what price you will get for your products. So it allows people to plan for the future as well. Um, what we also have, though, is problems of excess supply. So again, we're stopping that free market mechanism from um, clearing properly. There's more supply than what there is demand. Now, that could mean that often when it comes to demerit goods that have got these minimum prices, you might get black markets where these things might be sold illegally at a lower price. Well, that's a problem. But also, if it's things like food prices and we're giving farmers a guaranteed income for their crops, then they're producing more food at that price level than what there is demand. So quite often what the government have to do is to buy up excess supply. So they buy up all the excess supply to prop up that, that particular price in the marketplace. Now, for you guys this year, the big thing to focus on with minimum prices, though, is, is um, the fact that it lowers consumption of demerit goods and negative externalities. So, guys, there you go. Uh, maximum and minimum prices. Thank you very much for watching.